Right, so um, the objectives of today are to show off our new UI in PDISP. So um, I'm just going to go through the standard uh, quick introduction into PDIS because there are a couple of people here I know who want to know a little bit more about the program as well. A case study of how PDISP is used and showcase the new UI and layout. So just literally go into the program and, and, uh, and walk you through it. So PDISP is displacement due to pressure. It calculates displacements due to the application of a pressure, either loading or unloading. A prediction of settlement um, of ground due to surcharging is the um, obvious one. We can also have loading and unloading. So if you've got a demolition, it can predict soil movements due to that. Um, and predicting settlement of flexible footings and rafts. So the methods um, considered in PDISP are um, the elastic response methods and the consolidation method. So um, for the elastic response, we have the Buzanesque and Mindlin methods. Um, here's a comparison briefly of what the Buzanesque and Mindlin methods um, can do for your elastic response. So if you're more interested in horizontal displacements or traction for forces, um, look at Mindlin. And if you're more interested in um, actual stress changes and nonlinear soil, um, then please refer to the Buzanesque method. So the Buzines method, um, just in terms of accuracy, uh, just be aware um, that uh, you've got to set up certain displacement levels. And for the Mindlin method, it gives a horizontal movements and it considers settlements above load. So this is just some of the differences in the method. And there is also the consolidation method as well, which I will briefly go through now. Um, so in terms of why consolidation occurs, it occurs due to the expulsion of water from voids. Um, and we have primary and secondary consolidation. So um, within the program, you can use the MV method or the CC method. Um, uh, instantaneous settlement is generally due to drained and undrained soil, but the primary consolidation and secondary consolidation occurs in the undrained soil. So this is just an idea of the kind of graphs that you will get out for consolidation settlement. Right, so in terms of inputs for PDISP, uh, I'll go through this in the program as well, um, but uh, you will want to tell the program where you want displacements calculated. So this could be at a single point. It could be along a line if you've got a utility, for example, or if you wanted to model settlement contours, you need to put a grid in there. Uh, we can have loaded areas which are rectangle circles and complex polygons as well. So that can be modeled in the program. Base is defined by a rigid boundary, so that's where you would have rock. Um, and you can model soil profiles and so soil zones, and you need to specify your analysis method. So this is just an example of the soil zone numbering. Um, and the higher the number means that that soil zone could overlie other soil zones as well. So this is really good for soil lenses. So I really wanted to emphasize that PDISP actually um, can work with building and utility damage assessments because um, PDISP and XDISP have been combined. Uh, so just be aware of that and um, that PDISP uh, files can be read by our XDISP program. So if you're doing something and you've got a building or utility close by, um, assessments can be run for you. Uh, this is just a really good case study to show you how um, the outputs of PDIS compare uh, to a 3D FE analysis. So um, I feel it's really worth running through. So um, this is an Arup uh, case study, which where we compared a PDISP analysis um, for um, an LS Dyna 3D FE analysis. So Arup were responsible for designing a building in London directly above LUL tunnels. Uh, we had 3D FE analysis, um, which was used to model the building and the piles, and the Category 2 check was run using Oasis PDISP. So this is the kind of outputs that they were getting from the PDISP analysis. And um, this is the model of the stresses um, from LS Dyna, and this is the model of the stresses from PDISP. And as you can see, um, the vertical stresses in PDISP are identical to the LS Dyna model. Uh, in terms of displacement, the maximum displacements were occurring at the same point um, in both LS Dyna and PDISP, but um, LS Dyna had a maximum displacement of 3.18, whereas PDISP had a di maximum displacement of 6 mil. And this is what you'd expect, actually, because um, LS Dyna considers uh, the stiffnesses of the structure, um, and that's considered, um, and, and the foundations and various other things as well. So um, PDISP is a bit, a bit more conservative, but to be honest, when you're putting together design, um, that's what you're looking for. So um, that's also quite interesting. So let's go into the program. 
um, without much further ado, uh, where is it? There you go. So this is the new look of PDIS, as you can see here. Right, so um, this is just a file that I've put together. This is actually based on um, the last webinar where we set up a file. So if you are interested in how to set up this file and want to go through the process, you can watch our previous webinar. It's not in the new UI, but the actual process is very similar. So please do look at that on our website. So this is, as you can see, um, this is the options for the home ribbon. And there is also a graphics ribbon here where you can do things with the graphics. So um, I can change my actual view here for the 3D graphics. Um, I can look at uh, contours and various other things as well. So at the top here is this little um, PD button. If you click down on it, you can actually um, do most of the printing and saving and various other things. If I go down here to help, um, I can actually get some help as well. So in terms of looking at the help manual, checking for updates and things. So I just wanted you to take you around there. And this sets up a new um, PDIS file and saves and various other things as well. So that's there. So in terms of the inputting for, with PDIS, everything's pretty much the same as it was before. We've got the titles, which are shown here on the side. I'm just going to expand this a little bit. So as you can see, I can just pull that out. OK, so if you can see that the titles are here on the side, you can um, put your name and everything in. It's just it looks a little bit different, but the actual inputs are the same. Units are also there as an option. Um, so you can change that as well. And as you can see, I can toggle between the two. Uh, analysis options again are here um, and it, it was providing what it was previously. So you can change your analysis options or you can apply consolidation as well. Soil profiles are also the same. This is very similar to what it was previously. Um, and you can add soil profiles down here. Uh, Nonlinear curves is also um, the same. Soil zones is the same as it was previously. So um, the profiles give you the strata and the zones look in plan and allow you to actually input where those stratas apply. So again, in terms of loading, uh, that's very similar. So we can we can use a polygonal load wizard as you could previously. Um, I won't open that because that might there you go. So that that's all available, uh, which it was previously as well. And uh, we've got the displacement data. So the lines, grids, and points are the same as they were previously. So um, that's all available to you. And if we go to the Output Explorer, we can look at the full results. So if I want to look at displacement lines, I can do that here from the charts. If I want to look at the 3D option, um, that's available here. Um, and I can view that and change things in the settings wizard if I so wish. Um, so this is, again, very similar to the previous options that were available. So if I, for example, zoom in there. I'm actually looking at the deflected shape right now, um, but through the graphics option, um, I can click that off. I can try and go to fill contours instead. I can click on the wizard here. Um, I can look at specific results or I can look at the line contours instead of the fill contours. So as you can see, it picks up options as well. So it's quite nice to be able to pick this out from the ribbon. Um, so I quite like that feature. I find it's very helpful. The plans also available. So if I go to graphics, I can look at the pill, pill contours in plan. I can set the contour intervals. So that's again available to me. Um, and the tabular outputs are identical to what they were previously as well. So um, I've gone through it very quickly, but to be honest, um, the the look and feel of the program is, is quite modern and new. Um, but uh, the basic uh, practicality of PDISP and the way it works um, and so on and so forth are much the same as they previously were. So um, I think I can go back into the presentation now. So I'll, I'll do that. So um, in terms of our current circumstances, I know a lot of you are using PDIS from home. So just a note to run the analysis file locally, um, use the backup feature, um, just check you're using the most recent build um, and if you are um, using network licenses or anything like that to manage your license, use the license portal. 
We provide a lot of training and support, so please do contact us if you need training. But previous webinars, as I mentioned, there's one webinar which set up this whole file, um, are available on our website and tutorial videos are also there. Um, if you do have questions about a specific file you're setting up, um, please do email that in to oasis at arup.com. Uh, email the file itself and any questions that you have about the theory or, or the specific inputs that you've put in there. So, um, so I, I've gone through um, the methodology in PDISP, a quick case study, um, and I've set up, well, I've um, gone through the UI analysis as well. So I guess it goes for me to say, are there any questions? Um, and how can I help today? <laughs>